All right. Uh, sorry, I know I was making rapid fire videos, but um, I've had a stomach bug last several days, and that's kind of really put me on my ass. So uh, we did put our flipper kit in, as you can see up here. Uh, new plugs, uh, excuse me, new plungers, new links, new springs, new uh, bushings, new flipper bats, and all the good stuff. The only thing I don't have, you can see right here, the bumpers. The flippers are both extending a different uh, length, you know, when they were in the up position. Here are two different positions. I couldn't figure out why. It's because one of the bumpers was more worn than the other. Uh, I don't have any Daddy East bumpers. I have them on order. So you can see my hack job right here. <laughs> I uh, zip-tied a uh, Williams bumper or Stern bumper in there. But those are, I didn't have the right bumpers, but I needed new ones. The other ones were shot. And I wanted to give my both my flippers the uh, same amount of play, so I just did that real quick. They're on order. They're coming. Um, this one I had to cut and shove in there, and it's kind of working. Um, so that's done. Uh, the thing I'm dealing with now is a common problem, is my left flipper dies intermittently uh, in the middle of a game. Um, I'll go over that fix. That's well documented. That I'm not too worried about that. Fuses are fine, because when you give it time to rest, you start a new game. It starts to work. After a little while, it goes down again. It's not a connector issue so much. I'll show you. Um, what I'm working on right now is my drop targets aren't registering. Uh, my drop target, they were all going down, but they weren't resetting, and the skill shot wasn't registering because my targets weren't registering. Going through, where are we? Here we are. I found a broken wire. Let's see if I can get some focus in here for you. There we go. A broken, uh, come on. Uh, there we go. Broken green orange. All right. Uh, green orange is when I look it up in the manual and this is why I don't staple my manuals I, uh, I just put a big binder clip on them so I can take pages out as I need them if we look at green orange we see right there in the center of your frame CN8-3 drop target C-R-A-N-E left, left top, lock top left lock bottom in single left rollover so um, I got a, I got an issue and I got to find where this goes. That's where I'm looking for right now to see exactly where my brake is. Something to look for, a little tip from me. This isn't the brake, obviously, but this right here is where it was uh, zip tied tightly, kind of in a curve, a tight curve. That happens a lot. If you're ever looking for a wire brake, look under your zip ties where they take uh, sharp curves, uh, such as like here. You see that white zip tie down there? As these games move and vibrate over years, that wears down on the outside wires, and it can cause a break. So there's a very good chance. Um, that's why I went to the first zip tie I saw, and I checked it. And even though this isn't our break right here, I'm going to focus for the life of me. There we go. If this, this isn't our break, this was getting ready to break maybe in a year or two. So we're going to fix that with some shrink, uh, shrink tubing before we go attach this. But I basically, this wasn't hanging out like this. I... I unwound it from some of the wire loom just to check the condition of the wire uh, to fix that part of it there and to find out where it goes. Uh, I'm pretty sure it probably goes under the left rollover I think is where it's broken. It's not broken anywhere in this drop target bank. It seems to be okay there. Um, it comes from there. It loops up into the locks. Here's under the tar pit ramp. You can see the green, orange, green, orange. It seems to be okay there. And I, I think this broke from one of our rollovers. As you see, it says right here, uh, single left rollover. So I'm guessing that's, uh, that's where it came out of. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and hunt for it on camera because it could be a real tedious process. Um, but uh, places that look, like I said, are around those zip ties. That's a good place that things always break. Um, this looks like it didn't break from a solder point as far as I could tell. I could be wrong on that. Uh, this looks like it broke. There we go. This looks like it broke. Well, it might have broken from a solder point. The wire stripped off right there. So, you know, I'm not too sure where this broke off, but we're going to, we're going to find it. We can use our multimeter and probe around a little bit to find where our circuit kind of dies. And then we can kind of go from one end of the circuit to the other and kind of, troubleshoot down into the middle and then we can kind of get a fix on where exactly this is supposed to go so once i find that i'll uh, i'll turn the camera back on we'll be back all right uh you know what i forgot to turn the camera on to show you what i found um basically what it was was this connector here 
which is right in front of you. Um, the wire had broken off from within that connector. It uh, it looped through, looped through, and half of the wire stayed in the uh, the IDC prong, and the half that we were holding that was broken was the part that came through the connector. If that makes any sense. So um, so what I did was, and you can't see it now, I uh, used a just a, a spade connector. I did one for this green and white that was going to break, and I did the same thing for this green and orange. Uh, I just spade connected them together instead of replacing this whole connector here. Kind of a lazy way to do it, per se, but um, the lazier way would have been just to solder them or tape them together. I uh, actually made it so, since they joined a connector, you could always disconnect them if you wanted to. So, and I took these little uh, zip, zip ties here just to... Just to keep it away from the edge, um, because I think that's what part of what contributed this to break. This green and uh, and white wire that we did this to, this was getting ready to break right out of the connector. So I headed that off and I uh, put that spade connector on it, and obviously I did the one for the green and orange here, and then I just zip tied them to the harness over here just to to keep it this way, because it kept getting caught and rubbing over here. So. Uh, anyway, it's uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, actually. I think that's about... I'm just inspecting this wire here to see, make sure we're good. Uh, I think it's pretty much all the time we're going to have for... for uh, Last Action Hero this weekend. If we have time during the week, we'll come back. I still haven't forgotten about this. A uh, little spoiler alert. Usually what happens is when a flipper dies... Um, this isn't an end of stroke switch, per se... All right, that just pretty much lets the um, the solid state flippers. And I'm probably misspeaking here, but if you read the uh, technical bulletin, which I have upside down, it's a Data East Service bulletin number 54. It goes into here, um, flipper end of stroke failures, end of stroke switches are failing. So it's an end of stroke switch, but not how you and I think of an end of stroke switch, um, if that makes any sense. But basically, what it comes down to is there the uh, the bake light pads are cracking, and uh, it's causing the, the switch to lose continuity. So the test is you're supposed to jump out the two switch leads with alligator clips and see if that fixes the failure. So we'll do that when we get a chance. Uh, the thing I do have to do is I didn't check my work here. i got to go back, turn this on, and check to make sure our switches are working correctly. Maybe I'll do that later if I have a chance. But... Uh, we're going to go do the alligator clip lead test to this to see if that rectifies it. And if not, well, then we got to start searching around. Um, even if the alligator lead clip thing works, that just verifies the problem. That's not a permanent fix. The permanent fix is basically replace the switch, which we have new switches. We didn't replace them with the flipper rebuild kit because I thought the existing ones looked pretty good and I thought these looked cheaper. I guess, I guess I'm going to have to replace them. Or... We can modify our flipper board. We can get a new flipper board, a Revision C flipper board, or we can modify our existing one uh, to make the uh, uh, EOS switch and the stroke switch failure not affect it. I don't think we're going to do that, nor do I think we're going to get an updated flipper board. I think we're just going to replace the switch. And we'll keep the uh, the service bulletin in here too to remind ourselves uh, down the road if it fails again that, hey, maybe we got to check into that again. So anyway, uh, I am going to shut this down for the weekend. And uh, I'll be back uh, at some point in the coming week. So just as we were talking about before, uh, when I left you, um, I did test it. I took my uh, my test leads here, and I jumpered our two uh, two connectors for the switch, two leads here, and I was able to play a full game, no problem, without the flipper dying. So that just goes to show that it definitely is this switch right here. Uh, I didn't replace the switches. The kit came with new switches. And I didn't replace them because these switches looked in good shape. And actually, these switches looked like a little bit better quality than what came in the kit. But it looks like I'm going to be replacing those switches anyway because apparently we have a uh, there's a break in here. All right. So uh, I'm going to replace this one. Might as well replace the other one too while we're at it. Readjust them so we get a nice one-eighth gap when it's fully open. And that should take care of that small problem. Uh, I also... Went and I tested our drop targets. Uh, drop targets now work fine. Like I said, I was able to play a nice full game. 
with uh, with no issues. I adjusted our uh, our scoop right there. That now recognizes where the ball is. Those recognize when they uh, go down. The only little problem I'm having is the uh, the famous Daddy Dad Bay Data East trough switches. These things are a giant pain in the neck. Um, they have to be just right. So when the ball rolls over it, it registers. You can see some of them are a little bent. That's for me trying to adjust them. Um, I really have problems with the first two. The rest of these seem to function okay. Uh, yeah, see they're all down. See, even see. I know I have the play field up, but this one right here, this one's not down here. Here, clicking when I pull it, and the ball's on top of it. The ball should be pushing that down. Shouldn't be relying on me. So that one's good. And that one's good. So I gotta adjust this one. Yeah, these this this system sucks. <laughs> Uh, the opto whole opto troughs, which is in there, and I believe in the in the uh, the Dracula. Obviously, they could have their problems, but I, I like them a lot better because you don't have to deal with the stupid little micro switches. So we'll go and we'll adjust the blade on here. We'll make sure this roller here is is rolling okay. And um, while we're in there, and then we'll also replace that switch, and that should be two more small problems that are good to go. The other thing I had to do too on the uh, on the end, I had to adjust the switch on the end. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I had to clean the switch on the end. The uh, the end target over there, when it was going down, it wasn't registering, and the switch blades were meeting, but uh, it wasn't registering. So, took a business card, regular old business card, just went in that switch, cleaned it out a little bit. You really don't want to file stuff like that, or at least I try to stay away from filing those kinds of switches. All it takes usually is uh, just cleaning the contacts. I took a little bit of alcohol, cleaned it out, adjusted it, and now it works fine. So... Because obviously, if you if you don't have it, if you have one that's not registering, what's going to happen is the ball's going to hit it in the skill shot or any shot, and it's not going to think they're going to go down. And if it registers as one not going down or two not going down, uh, then the game doesn't know it has to reset them, and you're going to have that danger bar hanging out behind the drop targets, and it just it really affects the gameplay. A lot of stuff uh, relies on those drop targets, so you want to make sure they're working well. Um, with that said, let me go do this. I'll go do this. And then uh, maybe we'll play a game. I'll show you how it's playing. Which would leave the only issues, not that it's an issue, but we got to vacuum the inside of this cabinet. I saved that for last because of all the little pieces of wire and everything I wind up dropping down here. And then we got to fix that hum, that stupid speaker hum. I have the power supply. It got delivered to my office, which I am not at right now. Uh, so once we get that, we can uh, we can fix the final, final issue and put the... Put some LEDs in there too. So we'll be back. So we uh, we put our new switch in for the flippers. We've adjusted everything. We've got the ball trough adjusted. So um, all we're going to do now is we are going to give this a play. Now, it, it, uh, in full disclosure, I've already been playing this. I played it a bunch actually. Uh, so I know it all works. Uh, this isn't like a, ooh, let's see what happens. Um, so I figured I'd just show you, you know, the fruits of our labor, so to speak, that we don't have a, a nicely playing um, pinball machine. Uh, the only thing that did happen right here, if you look, one of the lenses popped off our, uh, our LED. Uh, I think the ball kind of whacked the scoop a little bit, and the scoop popped up a little bit, and it, and it hit that bulb. Um, the other thing I'm thinking is we should probably put the back glass in so it doesn't blind you. back glass i haven't cleaned it i haven't done anything to it this stupid back glass with this big head in it but if nothing else it'll diffuse the light a little bit from all those leds that's such a horrible back glass good god i i'm sure you all already know what it looks like but isn't that horrible i, I don't know I gotta get that alternate one with him swinging on the crane, crane of the rope or whatever like that, because this, I can't live with him looking at me like that in my basement all the time. So any, anyway, so let's go down here. I'll try to get you best view I can. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave the lights on only because just so I could check what's going on with everything. Uh, if it gets really annoying, we can turn them off. Again, this isn't the best angle. I'm not gonna do like a 20 minute play video of this. I'm just gonna play it probably for three balls. Full disclosure, I suck at pinball. Um, I just like it. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm good at it. 
So, here we go. I'll be back. You hear my dryer dinging in the background, too, saying my laundry's done. I also have to think about adjusting that uh, the color LED, color LED display. I know it looks good to you, but to me, I'm wondering if it needs to be a little bit brighter, and uh, I need to play with the contrast settings and everything. So, uh, as we go, we'll take a look. So, here we go. Hopefully, the ball trough's adjusted correctly, and it doesn't tell me I'm missing the ball. Shaker motor works good. It's moving a little slowly. I think we have to raise the back up a little bit. So the ripper works well. Shot it right back to my flipper. Told you I'm bad. Oh, now you see? Ball drains, but it didn't hit our uh, our trough switch, so now it still thinks it's a ball in play. So that's definitely one thing that I have to deal with before I put the glass back on. I just nudged the ball real quick with my finger, and it realized it. But obviously with the glass on, that's going to be a problem. Let's try again. And the speaker buzz isn't even all that bad. Just that vertical up kicker a little bit first too. If you didn't already know, basically the quote unquote one of the objects, the main object, is to hit your ramp, which will light your mode, and then the left scoop activates that mode. I can't even do that, for God's sake. Thank <laughs> you. 
green. pretty well. The only thing we got to adjust is that, like I said, that vertical up kicker. Sometimes it kicks it and it flies out onto the play field. I don't even know if you can hear what I'm saying right now. So I'm going to cheat now. I'm going to stop the ball from draining because I want to try to get that crane down. I guess I have to work on the switch. One of the balls went into that right scoop and it doesn't know it's there. So I had to hit the switch and now it'll kick it out. Oh, it's stuck out, so that's why. Ah, there we are. Thank you. See? So our ball got stuck right here. If you can see where my finger is. Um, that's why, you know, it's always good, obviously, to play a bunch of games with the glass off first, because these are the little things you'll never know about if you put everything back together. Which, uh, come to think of it, I believe I'm missing a, a yellow rubber band over there. So there you go. It shouldn't, st it shouldn't stick like that, obviously. Sure what happened there? I think it actually ejected the ball back into <laughs> the ball trough. That was interesting. What I got to do is I got to fix this gate here. This gate shouldn't be allowing balls back in. Another thing that I would never have known if I didn't play it with the glass off. There it goes. Not the ball surfing because. Shot the screen. Here we go. Shoot the roof. If you look at the center of the play field, the magnets are going, you'll see the balls get messed up. And I lost all my balls. 
I'm a big cheater. Alright, let's see if we can get the jackpot this time. There it is. Now, if you look, the crane's going over to get a ball. going to do like a 15 20 minute video and we're already at 14 and a half minutes so uh let's call it there as you can see we have a couple little issues to fix um i'll do that and i'll come back and we'll talk about that maybe a little bit so i don't know if you can hear anything i said during this video but thanks for watching we'll uh, we'll be back with the finishing touches